Team Wish. Ik ga ze direct erbij halen. Geef een applaus voor Bob Marley! Is, is this your first time in the Netherlands? No, I actually came here about 15 years ago when I was traveling. As a student or? Uh... Oh, like, yeah, between working and stuff like that, yeah. Oh. Um, I had a very, very Amsterdam experience. Um, where, like, because I don't, I don't smoke pot, but I did. Uh, no, when I came here, like yeah. the Amsterdam experience. Yeah, and I definitely had one of those and got lost in the city and all that kind of stuff. But oh, no. not this time around. The first time, when I was younger. Are you going to hang out in the Netherlands after you've gone? Or? No, I'm heading straight back to Los Angeles. You know, I've got, got the weekend off and then I'll go back and look after really? um, yeah, my son. Two new projects uh, that you're working on? Um, no, currently I am being a stay-at-home dad while my wife, Eliza, is shooting something in Los Angeles. So, yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Because, because you got the child uh, last year, right? With Eliza. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, did you met her on set or... Uh, because you married your co-star, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did that happen? No, um, well, we had met each other, I think, about 10 years before we started shooting The 100, and then we were like best friends throughout shooting, and then, yeah, we became yeah, married, and then we're parents now, so yeah. That's insane. It's pretty insane, yeah, but it's pretty awesome. And uh, I'm not going to ask too many personal questions. Of you. Do you like the new life as a dad? Pardon me? Uh, do you like your new life as a dad? Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's definitely like there's a lot of challenges, but that's far outweighed by the joy that Henry brings. Like it's an amazing thing, but a totally different perspective on the way I live my life now, for sure. And you just had your first Father's Day then, right? I th it's actually my second. Second? Yeah. Is it weird or do, do you enjoy it? <laughs> not real. I mean, it's not weird. It's, you know, I, it's, yeah, I don't, I don't think about it too much, yeah. Right, and again, behind the scenes, we were just talking, um, and you are doing Comic Cons for like 10 years now, you said. Yeah, I've, I've been doing, yeah, I've been going to conventions for like, yeah, almost a decade now. Yeah, the 100 start, we started shooting the 100 10 years ago, yes. so yeah. It's been a while that I've been traveling around doing this stuff. And also at San Diego, the big one, the biggest one in the world. Yeah. How is that to be at San Diego, to be on stage, just... Yeah, San Diego is wild and it's it's an amazing thing, like, especially when you're um, promoting a show, that's a lot more publicity and interviews and everything like that, so it's a little bit different. I prefer these kind of conventions where I get to meet fans and chat with them, whereas in San Diego it's a lot more about doing interviews and taking photos and going to events, whereas other conventions like this one, you get to actually sit down and talk. Hey! Um, yeah. It's a bit more personal, right? Yeah. Yeah, today. Well, um, well, I'm curious because you are an actor, and what inspired you to become an actor? Um, I think that I, I just enjoy. I did it all through high school, and it was just a fun place to exist. And um, I think it's kind of cathartic in a way, and just to play make believe. I really fell in love with it as a process, and yeah, I just kind of stuck with it because it's something that I really love and enjoy. So. Yeah. Was there like a favorite actor or favorite role that you saw that you were like, yeah, I have to be an actor now? No, not particularly. I think I grew up watching like Ninja Turtles. I've got like one brother and two sisters, so we were all a, a Ninja Turtle and we'd play that. Or just like I spent a lot of time, I grew up on a farm, spent a lot of time in my own little make believe world, and yeah, I just kind of guess I get that going on into adulthood. But would you go to a Comic Con yourself if you were a child? I would, yeah. If I was a young guy, I would, yeah. Okay. I don't think there was many when I was a kid, but yeah, there's a couple that I'd like to go to as well. Um, but we'll but see. But if you would have done cosplay in your youth, as what would you go, or nowadays? I probably would have gone as either Wolverine or Raphael or uh, Monkey Magic. I was a big fan of as well. Really? Yeah. But you can still do Raphael, you know, you'll be totally anonymous, you can walk Yeah, around. yeah, that's true. It'd be very hot in the, that suit, I imagine. Maybe there's one guy dressed as Raphael today, and oh, everybody really? here would go up to him now. Are you Bob Morley? Uh, yeah. yeah. Just to check. Have Maybe. you ever seen the Bellamy Blake cosplay? Yeah, I've seen a lot of them over the years, and a lot that are really fantastic. Really? Yeah. Is it, is it weird to see your character portrayed by somebody in the audience? 
No, I, I really appreciate it, and especially when they put so much attention and work into their cosplay. Like, I think it's a real art form in itself, so uh, it's not weird. I think it's kind of awesome. Yeah, of course, it's a yeah, really and, cool. and a really wonderful expression of you know something they love. Of course. Yeah. Um, and before we get to the hundred, a few more things. Because I saw um, that you're a wall climber and everything. Yeah. Would you do anything like that in a movie? Because I was wondering, like, maybe there could be a new Spider-Man from Spider-Verse <laughs> or something? Yeah, I mean, I, I love rock climbing. It's kind of my thing that I do. Um, I, I mean, they've been, like, even the 100 try to incorporate climbing into one of the scenes. It's always funny when I've done some scenes with rock climbing and things like that, and it's pretty boring and clunky. As a, as a climber, I'm like, this isn't anything like climbing. So, yeah, you end up spending, like, you know, five hours in a harness, whereas I would normally do that when I climb. I guess it's too dangerous to go without a harness, right? Well, I mean, it's just that you climb for maybe like five minutes, whereas when you're shooting a scene, it can take five hours, so it's, it's, kind of, it's not the same. Oh, nice. And uh, I also saw you did work as a director nowadays. Yes. Yeah. Uh, would you, what would you rather do, be an actor or a director nowadays? Um, I mean, I, they, I love them both for different reasons. Uh, I really... Directing uh, really engages me in a different way, um, where it's there's so many other aspects that go into making a film, whereas acting it's much more um, a personal experience, whereas directing is much more a pragmatic thing as well. So um, I'd love to, to live in a world where I can do both. You know? Did you direct your own movie and, and star in it? Like Woody Allen or something? Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe no, not no, no, Woody, Woody Allen. Allen. No, 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 no. I didn't say Woody Allen, sorry. Um, that's somebody else. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I would, but it also, I think that's a lot of work to do. I, I think I'd rather have somebody else act in it. And one question about the directing then. Um, which movie did you wish you could have directed? Um, I don't know, I, I don't really think in those terms. Like, I no. Like, I kind of... There's a lot of movies that I see, or even TV shows that I see, that I'm like, oh, I would have done that differently, or X, Y, and Z, but yeah, there's no one particular one that I wish that I could have directed. There are so many other aspects that come into it, like those blockbusters, they, those directors have so much pressure on them to deliver a product for a thing, so if I was to direct something, it'd probably be a, a, an indie where I had a bit more freedom to shoot nice. something that I wanted to do. I like that answer. Um, and of course, the 100, it uh, wrapped up nowadays. Yeah. yeah. How do you feel about it, that it, it's wrapped up? Um, yeah, like it's, it's been about three years now, and I, I think Eliza and I, maybe like four months ago, we revisited, we watched an episode of the show, like we both just hadn't watched it at all, and then um, like one day we're like, yeah, let's just like watch an episode and see how we feel, and it was super weird watching it again. But um, yeah, after having three years away from it, I can really appreciate it, and much more now. And um, yeah, really proud of the show. Yeah. But you never watched The 100 yourself, then? I would watch it to kind of analyze what I could do better, or what I, you know, in terms of performance-wise, but not necessarily watching it as pure enjoyment. It's very hard to do when you're, you're so closely involved with a project to kind of lose yourself in it. Well, well looking back, like 10 years ago, yeah. what's the biggest pointer you got for yourself, if you look back like the younger version of Bellamy Blake? Um, well, one thing that I think that becoming a father has, has taught me is that work isn't everything, there has to be a balance. I think when I was younger, and especially with 100, it became everything to me, and I, I put so much of my whole life was involved with 100 and the work. Um, so I'd probably say, hey, like, find a balance between work and life. It's, it, you need to be able to separate your work from your day to day. Um, yeah. And uh, go really back to the beginning, when you read the first script of The Hundred, did you consider this could be my breakthrough role? The, the whole world's gonna know me as Bellamy now? <laughs> or... No, I, well, when I first read it, I just read it for Bellamy and just saw that character and was excited by bringing him to life. And I, yeah, kind of had a, a connection to him early on. And then I, when I read the pilot, I thought it was really fun. Yeah. 
when did you realize that the, the hundred became so big? Because there must, must have been a point. I mean, you were guys who were shooting just a show, and all I, of a sudden there's a whole crowd in front of you. I think it, it's only really dawned on me since we finished. Like, to do a show for seven seasons is pretty rare these days, and um, yeah, like, looking back now, it's like, wow, that's wild. But if, if, they, if they were to hit you up right now, they call you uh, for a spin-off or a prequel or something, would you do it? <laughs> Depends who's involved, but possibly. Yeah, you would uh, be open to it? Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's a very heavy world to live in, it was, and it was a very um, taxing role, but I think now being older and um, being a little bit more wiser, then yeah, probably would. And of everybody in the audience, I mean, everybody has seen all the seven seasons, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah? Okay. Please, because if you haven't seen it all, please close your ears for just one minute. Yeah. Because you can probably guess what I want to ask you now. What's that? Well, for your final script. Oh, right. What was, how did it feel? Did you know this, was, this is the final script I'm going to receive or...? Well, I knew that I, because I had requested to take time off, so I knew that um, I was going out, didn't know which way in particular, so, um, yeah, I mean, you know, they, in order to have some sort of controversy or climax, then that was the way to do it, but, um, yeah, it was weird, it was a weird day to shoot, and it was a funny day on set because we had a splinter cell, which meant that we were shooting another episode at the same time, so, um, didn't really get to work with everyone else, it was just kind of me and Eliza, which in a way was quite nice as well, so yeah. Of course. Yeah. But you knew the show was ending, so it must have been so, so it must have softened the pain, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, in a way. It wasn't, it was, I had, because I had asked for time off, like I knew that I was going anyway, yeah. so it wasn't, um, wasn't a shock to me in any, in, in any way, shape or form. But how is it for you, uh, knowing that what will happen to Bellamy? sitting at home and knowing that nobody in the audience knows uh, the end of the episode. Were you on Twitter? Were you on YouTube? Did you watch live viewings of the fans reacting to your... <laughs> no, I um, I actually haven't seen season 6 or 7. Really? So I kind of stopped watching it season 5. Oh. But yeah. I mean, I watched the episode I directed yeah. because I had to. But um, yeah. No, I haven't actually watched season 6 or 7. Um, so yeah. I, I, but uh, how's that for you, directing one episode of The Hundred with uh, probably your friends, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How's that? It was amazing. I mean, it was one of the, <laughs> it was funny. I think I was supposed to direct a different episode, but um, there was like a move around in schedule, and so the episode that I ended up directing, I was actually in the episode quite a lot. So the first three days of shooting, I was in every scene whilst I was directing, so that was a real challenge, but... Um, was it harsh? It was hard, yeah. It was hard, and I remember our first AD thinking that um, I wasn't going to be able to pull it off, but I did, so I was very proud of it. Oh, nice. Uh, and for everybody in the audience, if you, have, if you have a question, you can ask it. Get in front of the microphone, right in front of the stage. Oh, uh, right In like one or two minutes, uh, we will go to your questions from the audience. Please, make a line, and we'll go through them. Because one last question I have for you right yeah. now. Uh, what will you do as yourself, as Bob Morley, if you were in the hundreds? <laughs> well, how would you survive? How would you live? How would you... Would you do the same as uh, Blake? Um, well, if it was me as a you know, 38 year old man with a son and a wife, we'd probably not hang out with all the kids and just mind our own little thing. But yeah, and me surviving in a post-apocalyptic world, I would like to think that I'd, I'd survive. I, would, I wouldn't necessarily start any fights or anything like that. I'm much more of a pacifist than I am a Bellamy Blake style person. Because you're much more a nice guy than a bad guy in the series. Yeah, to yeah. Be fair. Just well, be... I don't know if Bellamy's a bad guy. Well, yeah. he's a rough, you know, rough. Yeah, he's, he's harsh, that's for sure. He's harsh. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the first question. Season one, yeah. the first on the children were criminals sent to Earth. So, if you were one of the people being sent to Earth, what would possibly be the reason you were one of the criminals? What 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 crime would have I committed? Yeah. <laughs> I, when I was younger, like I was a bit of a, a kleptomaniac. Like when before before I went to school, I used to go to the local like corner store and steal like candy for school. So. I never got caught though, 
So I think probably something like that, stealing rations or whatnot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did I just incriminate myself? Yeah, I kind of. Am I going to jail? Hopefully nobody recorded this because... Oh, God. Oh, man. Let's go to the next one. You changed your accent for uh, filming The Hunger. Was it really hard to change your accent? Um, not particularly. I mean, I, I was, I was going to attempt to do it now. It's been a long time since I've done Bellamy Blake, but... Um, no, I, like, after seven years it became quite easy, but, um, no, it's not that hard. I have to ask you now, could you do the accents now? Uh, possibly. I could possibly do it. I don't know, he's like way down here. Yeah. And I'm, I talk more up here, so uh, yeah. That's the same. Nice. <laughs> Hi. Um, what is one message you would give to your fans? Um, to be kind to yourselves. You know, it's, it's one of those things, and I think that we need to remind ourselves each day, like, what, is, what are you saying to yourself? What's your inner narrative? Are you being nice to yourself today? And I think it's really important to just, for all of us to do that for ourselves, is to be kind and not so critical. Really nice question. And maybe also, uh, you became an actor from outside America. Mm -hmm. And there are probably people here in the audience who want to become an actor or a voice actor or something. Yeah. What's the biggest uh, tip you got for them? What should they do? Um, well, I think, when it comes into like comes to being an actor, there's no exact pathway to getting to where you want to be. Like if you were to ask Eliza the same question, she went through a totally different thing. She started acting when she was 11 and was on TV. Whereas I went to university for engineering and I didn't like it, and then started doing acting. I think as long as you have that passion for it and you keep working towards whichever way it is, there's no exact science to getting a job, but it's all about having that passion and just kind of constantly working on that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, that's the, there have been times, like even though I've been very fortunate as an actor, there are definitely times where I am like, what am I doing? Should I get a real job? Should I do this? Um, but I've always been in love with the job and being a performer. So that's what keeps me there is the passion for it. Nice. Just follow the passion. Yeah. Next one. So I just started watching In Limbo and I was wondering how was the experience of shooting that because I think we're not super used to seeing you in comedies. Yeah, yeah. I mean In Limbo is, uh, it was a really challenging role, it was my first comedy. Um, I was really lucky, the director Trent O'Donnell had done a lot of shows like The Good Place and New Girl and Hacks and so he was really, you know, he's like a, an amazing authority on comedy and so he really helped me through it um, and it's you know it, it's quite a, an emotional show it's about something that's very important to me and that's mental health um, and for bringing that awareness out there is um, was really an important message to spread so yeah I had a really good time doing comedy for the first time um, I don't know if you guys will get it here I hope that you will I don't know how you watched it but you did a VPN was. yeah <laughs> but yeah, I hope everyone gets to see it, and it's something that I'm really proud of. But yeah, thank you. Like, with VPN, you're also like a little kleptomaniac nowadays. <laughs> yeah, I do it. Yeah. Still. Ooh, let's go. Uh, yeah. I was wondering, what was your favorite season to film? Because there are so many seasons. Uh, my favorite season, it's between season one and season three. I think uh, season one was so much fun. Uh, it was a really fun storyline for the, the young crew. And season three, for me personally, um, working with Mike Beach was a big shift for me in the way that I, I, I approached work. So, um, yeah, season three was quite great too. Um, yeah, I, I enjoyed those as well. But season one was a lot of fun as Bellamy. I really enjoyed playing the bad bad guy along as alongside Richie. It was a lot of fun as well. Maybe in the same uh, context, of which season or episode or scene are you the most proud of? Like, which, if somebody were to ask you what have you done, what would you show them, first of all? Um, I mean, I, I'm really proud of The 100 as a whole. I mean, it's probably one, it's one of the biggest things I've done. Um, in terms of, like, which episode or season or scene, um, I couldn't tell you because it... 
I, I put the same amount of effort and passion into the show whenever I was there. You know, and I, you know, maybe I grew as an actor or I got worse, I don't know, but I know that I, I gave it everything that I had, so as a whole, yeah, I'd say, you know, I actually think that the end of season five is probably one of the, the best episodes. Yeah. Very good. Answer. Yes, hello, uh, Bob. Uh, firstly, I really enjoyed you in the outro and all the things you did, but I have one question. Yeah. I want to be, uh, I want to be a director lately. Do you have any tips for me? Yeah, it's it's the similar thing. Like, I'm not sure how the system works here in the Netherlands, but getting into the direct a directing program, going to school for it, building your connections through that is a really important thing. Building a community around you, whether that's like directing your friends here and there, but just creating content and learning how to do that. I think, especially now, you know, being able to upload things is a really handy tool. So, just getting familiar with terms and context and trying to get your foot in the door through the system is a really important thing. I mean, I was, I kind of, like I said, like a with me and my directing, it came through a roundabout way where I was asked to do it. Um, it wasn't something that I considered and then really fell in love with it. But there are, like if you go to school for it and then you build a community around yourself and you start creating work, then I think that that's a good place to start. Thank you. No worries, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Let's go to the next one. Hi. Hello. What is your favorite scene between Melanie and Clark? Favorite scene between Bellamy and Clark. Um, I actually think it's the one where we're on the beach, about to go over to Luna's um, uh, oil rig, and uh, Bellamy's talking to Clark about Octavia, and then um, then they get taken by the those swamp men. But uh, that was a really beautiful scene to shoot, and it was just the two of us, and it was like late at night, and it just was really quiet out there, and it just felt like a really strong connection between the two of them and, a, and an honest conversation between Bellamy and Clark, which I really enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Do you have any favorite song or band to listen to? Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> I listen to the Avert Brothers a lot. One song that I, I listen to to kind of get me going is um, I think it's Motown Funk by Bruno Mars. Uptown, Uptown. Uptown Funk. Funk. Uptown Funk, yes. There you go, Uptown Funk. See, I don't know. But I know I like that song. That's a lot of fun. Nice, uh, sounds good. Yeah, thank you. A great song, by the way. Uptown Funk? Yeah. That's a drop. Yeah, I like it. Next one. Hi. Uh, hey. um, I've been watching Hunter since season two, and like here in the Netherlands, it doesn't always air, so I've always been watching it. Illegally. Yeah, okay. And I just want to say... It doesn't I, air here. Well, um, it, yeah, it does, but it's like later on, so right. it doesn't air at the same time. Right. So I used to just get up at 4 a.m. and oh, wow. stream it illegally. <laughs> wow, it's a commitment. Yeah, I, I truly loved it. And Melanie was literally one of my favorite characters ever from moment one. Thank you. And I just want to ask if there's any other character you could play in the 100, which would you choose? I actually... Um, I think everyone played their characters really well, so not, not in no way am I kept comparable, but one character that I really loved and I thought was really complex and interesting was Jaha. Like, he was mad in a, in a really interesting way. So, yeah, and I loved what Isaiah did, um, but I think Jaha is a, a really complex man, and that was kind of interesting to watch. That's cool, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So first of all, I'd really like to compliment uh, on the way you portrayed Bellamy. I think you did an amazing job. Thank you. Um, he's a very complex character, and he's also very much of a macho guy, mm. whereas you are very bright and like a little bit more bubbly. And um, I think at least, <laughs> yeah. And uh, Bellamy fit in really well in like the spy crew. But what would you fit into? Would you rather be tree crew or as Gadda clan? Which clan in the hundred would you fit into? Um. I think I'd be Sky Crew still, yeah. I mean, you know, like I very much believe in science. But then, uh, yeah, I mean, we're looking at science fiction world, but yeah, I think that 
and so moulded by the world that we live in that Spike Crew seemed like the most logical place that I'd fit into. Yeah. That's great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, thank you. I don't, uh -huh. and I won't. <laughs> no, I, I, don't think, I don't think I've danced since I've had my knee operation. But yeah, that was like since 2018. And I actually think I need to get an operation on my left knee now. So imagine if I did a dance move, and I did my left knee right now, guys. That has to get taken away. I mean, you just, have your hands. Hey? Your, your arms, your hands. Yeah. It's funny when it, like maybe a break dance move for your hands. This is this, oh, this, my son dances every now and then, and when I ask him to dance, this is what he does. That's the dog. That's his move. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, while looking you up, I found out you are a, a contestant in It Takes Two, right? What? Were you a contestant in Australia on It Takes Two? It Do what? It Takes Two, a television. Oh, it takes. Two. It takes two. Yeah, it was. Yes. yes. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, oh no, it's painful. Because how did it go for you? Side the acting now, sorry, we'll go back to the question. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I like got kicked out on the fifth week or something like that. But it was an experience. That's not bad, the fifth week. Not bad, no. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was an experience, learning how to sing. But, uh, Would yeah. you ever do, do it again? Or... Sing? Uh, I mean, I sing at home and, and play guitar, but not... Um, but under the shower then? Not a... Yeah, yeah, more so. And like, like sing for Henry and stuff like that, but yeah. But you wouldn't make a living out of it. <laughs> I don't think I could make a living out of it. No? No. But, uh, would you guys uh, pay to see him sing? You could. That didn't sound like everyone. No, but you wanted every... <laughs> would you guys pay to hear Bob sing? <laughs> there you go. Oh, there you go. I hear that Ben Barnes sings, so maybe yeah, maybe do some up with you with him later. Oh, nice. <laughs> Let's get to the next question. Hi, uh, my name is Francisca. I know I'm having a lovely day here at Comic Con and in the Netherlands on average. Thank you. And uh, my question for you is in the last season of the 100, uh -huh. um, uh, they have to uh, do a task like, Clark has to do a task like to save all of humanity. And they see their biggest mentor. Who do you personally would have seen in that task? As his biggest mentor? As your biggest mentor. Me? Yeah, you. Yeah. Me, Bob Morley. Yeah. As my biggest mentor. Uh, I mean, this sounds really corny, but now being a dad, it's probably Henry. I mean, I feel like he teaches me a lot of stuff about myself, even though he's not meaning to, but I think I've learned a lot more about myself being oh, a dad that's, that's from so him. That's so sweet. That's so sweet. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks, thank you. Hi, my name is Alicia. And um, my question is, what was your favorite behind the scenes? My favorite behind the scenes on the 100? Um, 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 there was a day where, I uh, can't remember what season it was, but where Ian, uh, Kuzik and I were handcuffed to each other. And we were handcuffed to each other for the whole day. Um, and he's a pretty funny guy. And so that was a, for me that was a pretty funny day where I just, he would want to go somewhere, I'd want to go somewhere else, but we were handcuffed to each other. I don't know why the props department didn't, you know, set me free, but I think it was just like a funny thing to do. But it, it was really the whole day? It was, it felt like the whole day. But like going to the toilet. That's... Oh, no, no, I didn't go to the toilet with Henry. Yeah, but you have to because if you're stuck <laughs> no, to get... but that's, that's the thing, like they could have, un, un, they could have, unlocked me yeah. and I didn't for some time but anyway that was fun so you rather didn't go to the toilet no that's right yeah well buy a diaper then uh, yeah. yeah thanks thank you hi my name is Clara hello and, um, my question is do you see fan edits do a what see fan edits Oh, like yes. the edits people make of you. No, I, I see some of them, like whatever the algorithm lets me see on like Instagram and that, but yeah, I don't, I don't see too many. Do you do them? Okay. You make them? Oh, cool. Well, you'll have to show me later on some of your stuff. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Hi. Hello. I know I look a little bit funny, but... <laughs> Hi, you look amazing. That's um, cool. Thank you. But as a makeup artist, I 
was, um, I'm actually like studying yeah. for makeup, and for some reason seeing you and Murphy like being absolutely beat up, it was kind of fascinating to me, and it really made me want to um, work, work with special effects, yeah. and I was going to ask like, what's your um, experience with special effect makeup? Like, was it, did it take long? Sometimes, like, the testing process took a long time, so, like, we'd have to do multiple looks and everything like that. But then, um, once we found the look, it was a relatively quick, maybe, like, an hour, hour and a half. Um, but, yeah, I, like, I, I quite enjoy it. It makes me feel very much in character when you've got that stuff. The worst part is, like, when it's a hot day and you're sweating underneath it, and, yeah, it's just pretty gross, but... Yeah, I really enjoy it. Especially when it's done well and our makeup team were really fast and really good. Like, they're amazing. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Hi. Hello. Uh, do you have any career goals for the next couple of years? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, like, I mean, I always have goals and dreams and or visions and kind of putting out positive energy, but yeah, I'm not confined by that. I kind of let opportunities come and, and then see how it, it plays out. So, just an open mind is what I have. Okay, that's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Oh, nice. Good question. Hello, my name is Queenie. Uh, my question is, which couple of the hundred did you like the best? Which one? What? Which, uh, which couple of the hundred did you like the which best? Which couple? Couple. Oh, yes. um, Murphy. I mean, not Murphy. Monty and. Why, why do you like them the best? Because they were like, even though, yeah, they had their ups and downs, they were like the only healthy couple in the end. All the other relationships were really toxic and like aggressive and dramatic and there was death involved in all of them. Whereas those two, they grew all together and had a child. Like that's pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It's like the only functioning relationship on the show. It's true. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Song, but I was wondering which song would fit or describe the hundred the best. Um, I don't. I, I was just thinking, like, what songs do I know? What popular songs do I know? And for the last year, I've just been singing nursery rhymes. And the only thing that came into my head was the wheels on the bus go round and round. That's a good one. So that could be it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that was. Wow, I've not listened to adult music in some time. I can wait to see a fan edit of that. Hey? I can wait to see a fan edit of that. Yeah, we have yeah, yeah. yeah. With Blake. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, my question is, what was your dream career when you were younger? When I was a kid, I wanted to be a stuntman. Um, and I guess I've got to do a bit of my own, like I did a lot of my own stunts, but yeah, when I was a little kid I wanted to be a stuntman, used to like jump off things and like, you know, get a climb onto the roof and jump off that or swing off trees or one thing I used to do was try and bite through ceramic plates as a kid because I obviously thought I'd need to do that, but yeah, I wanted to be a stuntman. You have done a few of your own stunts, right? Yeah. And yeah. how is it? Is it uh, it's, it's fine, like, I, I mean, I really like doing fight sequences. Um, the hardest bit, I think, is, you know, it can take a long time, and you do come home with some bruises, and I, I broke my hand, and, you know, did my knee, and had a lot of injuries that came with it, but it's really quite enjoyable in the end. And it's, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. already said Jaha, but another character that I think is pretty rad was um, Octavia. Had an incredible journey, so yeah. And Marie did a cool job, like so. Yeah. Octavia is a pretty rad character as well. Yeah. Thank you. Hey. What's your favorite animal? My favorite animal? Um, I mean, I've got, a I've got penguins tattooed on me. But I don't know if they're my favorite. I'm 
mean, my favorite animal is like my dogs. You know. Yeah, I like those. Yeah. Really great question. Yeah. The last one. Hi. Um, what was your favorite movie or show to act in? Um, uh, the hundreds definitely up there, but I, for me. It's probably been in limbo, the one that I just I recently did, um, and doing comedy and like playing around was a lot of fun. Like it was a challenge, but also really rewarding. So yeah, I love doing the hundred. Um, Bellamy Blake was such an awesome character, and I'd love to do sci-fi again. But in more recent history, then yeah, in limbo was a lot of fun for me. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Because uh, this whole time we've been talking a lot about the hundred, yeah. which is of course logical. It's a big show. Yeah, yeah. But is there a project that you have done that you wished everybody would have seen? Um, I think. Well, I'm, I've got a couple of shows out at the moment, but um, In Limbo is one that's really important to me, and um, you know, it's about mental health and mental health awareness. I don't really want to talk too much on it. I don't want to upset anyone or trigger anyone. But yeah, it's a it's a very Deep show, but also really funny. Um, so that's a show that I'm, I'm really proud of. That's yeah. out so, now. Yeah. So everybody should watch at home at least one episode of In Limbo. Uh, yeah. 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 If you can. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Hi. Um, I don't have a question for you, Bob. I'm okay. sorry. That's all right. Bardo, I don't know if you remember, but last year you promised me an autograph after the, like the panel, and then you didn't give me one. Yeah. Why didn't you give her an autograph? <laughs> what's, what's the deal, man? Oh man, I'm sorry. Because I used to watch you a lot as like a YouTuber. Well, I, I will be uh, conducting the next panel, and at 12 o'clock I will be left off the stage. I don't, oh, that's, that's I don't, believe, I don't believe, believe you. Oh man. What are you playing on Twitch right now? Sorry? What are you playing on Twitch right now? Well, I'm a non-gaming Twitcher. How do you know that I'm a Twitcher? I, I've heard, I've heard things. Oh man. Right. So no way, so you're watching my stream? <laughs> no, no, I just heard that you played it. And I was going to ask, have you played Hogwarts Legacy? Uh, not yet though. I'm into Diablo 4 and... Uh, oh right, how's that? It's great. It's yeah. great. It's I, don't, like, I, I played the other, other Diablos, but I don't think it's like suitable with a little kid around the house. No, no, not at all. And I, Eliza isn't into it. Like me and Eliza play Hogwarts Legacy together. Wait, you're, you're a gamer? Yeah, yeah. Really? What's your favorite game? Well, I mean, I play it more like... Like I used to play Diablo a lot. Um, and then... More like F1. I'm a, I'm a big F1 fan. Really? I'm a Max Verstappen fan. Very uh, oh, nice. Yeah. Are you going to uh, Zandvoort? I wanted to know, is it close by? Uh, Zandvoort is like 45 minutes away. Or yeah, right. So it's not that far. I'm too busy. I'm oh, flying back on Monday, but yeah. Oh wow. Well, uh, well thanks. That was a big Left side of the stage. Yeah, and I'm really sorry. Promise? Yeah, I promise. At 12 o'clock. <laughs> And people can meet you. You're the worst, mate. You're the worst. <laughs> but like one question, it's a bad one. Yeah. <laughs> why? Why? Why did you leave her hanging like that? I don't know. Maybe I, I'm an ass. No, I'm, I'm sorry. For like a whole year she's been waiting. Just still in shock that you do that with Twitch, though. Right? <laughs> um, and people can meet you the whole day through. Oh yeah. On the left. I look like I'm over there. Yeah. Yeah. Or right underneath your photo. Uh, yeah. People can take photographs. Uh, yeah. Autographs. Yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Well, uh, I'm going to thank you for now, for this panel. Everybody, give it up for Paul Thank you. See you guys, I'll see you soon. Bye. And for the rest, blijf wel even zitten, want...